Welcome back to my channel. My name is Juliette and I am a lifestyle and post-college graduate vlogger. Today is Monday, January 27th and I'm starting up this new vlog um, kind of as a days in my life vlog. This week I want to try to do a days in my life and kind of just pick up the camera here and there when I have, you know, something different or something interesting rather than me just like you know doing the dishes and making coffee every single day and so forth and just see like you know how that goes i also kind of want to make this vlog kind of focused around um transitioning yourself from being a college student you know a full-time college student to a full-time worker because um i've been at my job for about over a year now I'm actually like a year, one month, and 10 days as of today on January 27th. So I think it's kind of, you know, appropriate. And I feel like I have the knowledge, you know, not, you know, as much knowledge as somebody who's been in the workforce for like five to 10 years, but definitely somebody who, you know, can remember still that transition from being a full time student to being a full time worker because there is. A kind of weird transition period when you start going and working a nine to five or eight to five for me it's a nine to six um, you know getting comfortable with not being in class and actually dedicating basically I would say 80% of your day to a job so that's what this vlog is going to be focused on and I'm just gonna like pop in here and there, you know, kind of talking about this transition from being a student to being a full-time employee at a company, whether that's, you know, in sales or, you know, in accounting or, you know, for me, I'm a vision therapist. So, you know, I think, you know, while we may all have different jobs and different demands from our jobs, we can all, you know, kind of, you know, have a common theme of that transition period from being a full-time student to a full-time employee. So anyways, I'm going to, I'm going to get on with my morning. It is currently around, let's see, it is 644 and I'm going to be leaving for work in about an hour. And I have an email I need to send off for letters of recommendation. I have to re-email one of the professors who has not gotten back to me. And then I also, if I have time, I need to edit a YouTube video thumbnail and description and also hopefully get some dishes done, but we'll see what I can get through with this morning. Hey guys, so it is about 8.30. I just pulled up into work, but on my way to work, um, I actually got an email and like I wasn't like texting an email or texting and driving, but like I had a notification pop up and I saw it like from my periphery and I was at like a stoplight. But I saw that I got an email from my professor saying that she would write me a letter of recommendation. So I'm so excited because now I not only have one, but I have two professors who are willing to write me a letter of recommendation for my graduate school program. And I am just so freaking excited. Like this is such a big weight lifted off of my shoulders because um, last Monday I had emailed both of the these professors and only one had responded back to me and so I was starting to get like pretty nervous that you know I would not be able to get two re letters of recommendation but I you know I just kept you know staying patient and I just decided that this morning I was gonna re-email my second professor again with all my materials that she would need to write my letter of recommendation and she emailed me back and I'm just so freaking excited and happy it's like such a good 
like way to start my work day um and i'm just i don't know it just makes me more excited and it's just you know a nice turnaround too from my gre that i took this saturday you know that was not it was, it was disappointing like my scores i felt very like i, I don't want to say disappointed because i know i worked hard and i know that some people would just dream for those scores and everything but it's just this just sets me it just turns around my attitude almost because I'm just so anxious that my scores for the GRE are, are not good enough. And so now I'm just relying a lot heavily, a lot more heavily on these letters of recommendation, my past experience in undergraduate with being a teacher, a teacher assistant and undergraduate research assistant as well. So that's what I'm kind of banking on at this point, but I'm just so excited. like. You have no idea how exciting this is. But um, anyways, I am going to head into work. Um, got a full schedule ahead of me. And I'm just, I'm just ready to take on today after hearing this really good news. So anyways, I will catch y'all a little later. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. Um, sorry, I didn't really vlog a lot yesterday. It was pretty much just like my morning and then when I got to work telling y'all about my professor who emailed me back but honestly not much happened yesterday work and seeing my parents for dinner that's really all that happened um but I will say one thing I did submit my graduate school application um so I submitted the whole dang thing um I submitted also some other things like my statement of personal goals that's the graduate school essay that I've been working on as well as um, my resume so now all that's left is waiting <laughs> literally just waiting waiting on the professors who've already agreed to write my letter a recommendation to send those in waiting for um, ETS to send in my GRE scores don't need to do the transcript because I'm going back to graduate school at the same university that I did my undergraduate at. So not much of a reason to resubmit a transcript that I already attended the school for in my undergraduate. Plus they say on their website that you don't have to submit it because they have access to it. But anyways, I'm just chilling. It is 7.34 so I have to head out to work very soon. but. I'm just having a little bit of yogurt and also scrolling through my phone on Amazon, of course, um, to get some things that I forgot to get at the grocery store, which that means just one thing, which is this dish, dish soap. That's a hard word to say. I don't know why. But anyways, um, I have work today and I think after work, I want to go work out finally. Um, I did work out on Sunday, but it was really just like an uphill walk like literally an uphill walk because I just was like still dead from the GRE that I just didn't want to put much effort into it. But I think I'm going to go work out after work today at my apartment gym and then make some veggie lasagna. I know it sounds so freaking good in my crock pot. I'm so excited for that. So yeah. So I just went to my apartment gym and I just bailed. I, I need to work out, but I just ended up leaving the gym. Like, because when I went in, all the lights were turned off. I mean, I could get in to the actual gym itself, but all the lights were turned off. And that just creeped me out. And I couldn't find a light switch or anything. Like there were buttons I could push, but nothing would come on. So I've got like just the heebie-jeebies. And so I'm bailing on the gym. I think what I'm gonna do is, um, I think I'm gonna go do like, I don't know, I need to cook. Um, 
I'm gonna get, I need to cook. I need to make some lasagna, veggie lasagna in the crock pot. Um, but I think what I'm gonna do probably is I'm going to go home, take out my dogs, uh, make the lasagna, and then do like an ab workout. I think that's the plan because I don't, you know, I don't have any workout equipment at home at my apartment or anything. It's just me, myself, and I, and like my living room floor and my computer. So I think that is it because I just got so creeped out the fact that there's only there's like two areas of the gym and only one of them was lit up and it was not the area that I usually work out in like I usually work out where the treadmills are and that it was just totally dark couldn't again figure out how to turn on the lights I think only the leasing office can control it or something I don't know either way I'm bailing out on the gym for today going to maybe do an ab workout when I get home but Oh well, you win some, you lose some, and today was just not my day for the gym. guys so it is about 8 30 I believe and I came home take out took out my dogs and I didn't really work out I mean I guess I like kind of but I didn't it wasn't really like I, I don't count it as a workout but um I made my veggie lasagna in the crock pot so that's actually which I should have really checked the time on it but um I start I finished making it at 7 25 if I, according to the recipe, if I cook it on high for three hours, it'll be done. So it should be done around 10.30. So that's good because when my boyfriend comes home, he'll be able to have some veggie lasagna. But that also means that I can't have the veggie lasagna technically if I want to go to bed at a reasonable time. So I actually made myself some... I think tomato, basil, good and gather pasta. I know that um, when I did my grocery haul the other day on Sunday, um, I got those little, I guess, I guess pre-made raviolis. That kind of sounds like it's not healthy, but I mean, it's probably not that healthy, but I, it's definitely healthier than like Kraft mac and cheese. So that's what I made myself and I just put on some tomato pasta sauce pretty basic and then i also worked on editing my vlog from when i took the gre and it's just it it's taken forever to be honest it's such a long video too it's about 37 minutes and i'm just not not excited about compressing that video because i'm pretty sure it's around like 83 gigabytes and I'm like holy moly like that's gonna take forever to compress um but anyways um the rest of the night I'm pretty much chilling um I have to get up tomorrow morning around 4 45 to take a shower and get ready for work and yeah I'm not excited to do that but anyways I just wanted to check in with y'all give y'all a little update I think Right now, I'm going to end up cutting to a few clips on me giving some tips to you about how to transition from your everyday college student, you know, being a full-time college student, to being a full-time worker in the real world. So, anyways, we're going to cut to that. Hey, guys. So, I'm just popping in to talk a little bit about the transition between going from a full-time college student to a full-time employee at a company. For those who don't know or those who are new to my channel, I am actually 
Um, I graduated from college in December 2018 as a or with a Bachelor of Science in Psychology and a minor in Applied Statistics and Data Analysis and I literally started working about five to seven days after I walked across the stage at graduation. So my time for transitioning between being a full-time student to being a full-time employee was very short. I just jumped into the workforce and I have I have little regret about it. I kind of wish that I could have started in the new year, but I also just with anxiety and everything, I just wanted to start working as fast as possible so I wouldn't have to, I guess not dread, but I, I, be, I would be able to get the training over quicker and I'd be able to learn my job faster per se because I started working earlier rather than, you know, you know, waiting into the new year and thinking, oh my gosh, like I, in the new year, I'm going to be starting a new job. Oh, that's so scary. Like, I just, I don't know. I just wanted to get it done with and I am very happy at my job right now. I am a vision therapist, so I work to help patients um, learn how to use their eyes more efficiently, which allows them to not only see better, but also alleviate headaches or, you know, eye pain, soreness, teariness, redness. Um, and it just really makes day-to-day -day activities a lot easier for these patients because they are developing very, very integrated visual skills. And I could go like a whole tangent about what vision therapy is and what I do as a vision therapist, but that's not the point of this video. So anyways, that's a little bit of background, but let's first talk about the moment of, oh, I'm working for the rest of my life. So one of the things that I didn't really come to terms with when I first started working full-time was that once you graduate college and unless you're getting like your master's or your PhD and you're going right in from undergraduate to your master's or PhD, you literally are like a real, real, real adult and the rest of your life is all about pretty much making money and sustaining your life by working and it really didn't hit me until I started working full-time started getting paychecks when I was just hit with the thought that oh wow like <laughs> I'm working for the rest of my life this is the rest of my life working a nine to six working a nine to five whatever your times are and it was kind of upsetting to be honest um, coming to the realization that I really am just working for the next 40 to 50, maybe even 60 years of my life. And it wasn't until I, you know, started understanding and realizing that, yes, even though I have the rest of my life to work, and not really the rest of your life, but, you know, a good chunk of your life, the rest a good chunk of the rest of your life is committed to being in the workforce, contributing to the society in some way. But it wasn't until I started realizing that while there are parts of my life where I do have ownership over my time and I do get to choose what I want to do and how I want to spend my time outside of work. And I think it just takes, you know, time getting used to your nine to six, nine to five, eight to five, whatever schedule that you have at work. And then kind of, you know, getting adjusted to that schedule first and then filling in the gaps where you have that free time and really, you know, allowing yourself to own that time. So what I mean by own that time is, you know, finding activities to do during your free time that makes you feel like you're thriving and that could be something as simple as just reading a book or watching netflix or even just cleaning and feeling like you're getting your life together for me 
it's what really helped me you know gain more ownership of my time is just cleaning and just you know getting my life together and planning for the week ahead on the weekends when I when I have all the time in the world to do whatever I want so I also want to talk about what to expect from your very first few days few months of work as a new employee so when you transition from being a full-time college student to a full-time employee there is definitely a point in that transition where you are just you feel very vulnerable you know you just got hired at a new company you're now the baby again you're not you're no longer a senior in college you know all bad and yeah we're gonna graduate and i you know top of the totem pole you when you join the workforce for a new company you're at the bottom again and it can be very scary and nerve-wracking but i'm here to tell you that it gets better it really really does and i know that when you join a new company and you're training it can be very scary you know you you're getting all this information at once you have these new expectations placed on you you may be learning things that you've never even learned before in school and somehow you're expected to retain all this knowledge and one day you're going to be on your own performing a job and it, in your first week or even month of working you can't even fathom being on your own and doing this job that you were hired for you know, when i started working as a vision therapist i trained for six months and during the first week or two i was just like what like you want me to do this i'm gonna be a vision therapist like how i like I, I just, I had imposter syndrome. I really did. Just, I didn't believe that I was capable of doing the job that I was hired for. And it's, it can be difficult just, you know, gaining back the confidence and, you know, feeling like you know what you're doing. But, you know, I just, I'm just here to tell you that it will be okay. You will learn how to do your new job that you've been hired for. I, you know, I never thought that I could be a vision therapist, but it just kind of happens. You learn, you get trained, you ask questions, people kind of nudge you in the right direction, you make mistakes, you learn from your mistakes, and you eventually become a real employee, and you actually feel like, hey, I'm no longer a trainee, I'm actually a real person in this company. And I think, you know, when you are a new hire at a company, fresh out of college, I really think you need to take advantage of every opportunity to learn everything you possibly can and to get as good as you can before the reins are taken off, before they set you free. And, you know, I, you know, I would hate for you, I would hate for myself as well to be like six months into a company and not even know what you're doing because when you were first starting you never asked questions because you were too scared but you need that when you first get hired at a company and they start training you you need to ask as many questions as possible you need to be a sponge you want all the knowledge because it's really going to help in the long run and it's honestly okay when you start working at a new company, it's okay to not know anything. It's okay to, you know, be dumb. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay to ask too many questions. There's literally nothing more discouraging for a new company than an employee that doesn't want to learn. And employers want their new hires to be able to observe everything, you know, learn as much as possible and to also show interest in the company. When you ask questions and you ask for help, you are showing interest. You are showing renewed interest in the company. So all this is just to say, it's okay when you first start at a company to not know what the heck you're doing and to ask a million and one questions. It's all gonna end up adding up to you being the best employee that you can be, a well-educated, a well-versed 
employee at this new company. Okay, so I also want to talk about this, I guess, misconception. I don't even know how to define it, but just the fact that your first job that you get out of college may not be the very last job you have. There is there is nothing wrong with getting out of college, starting a new job, and not liking it 100%, and not feeling fulfilled, and just feeling like you're just going to work to get money. There is nothing wrong with that. I think that, you know, I'm 23 years old, and I, you know, I'm kind of like a millennial slash a Gen Z. I don't really know what generation I'm in, but I'm young enough to, you know, kind of be a part of this culture where we expect our first job out of college to be the only job we have, the best job, the last job, this is the job we're gonna retire with, bam, bam, you know, everything's great. But that's not necessarily true and it's okay that the first job you get hired at is not the perfect fit for you. Honestly, when you first graduate from college and you get your first job, I hope it's not your last job. Unless you're climbing up the corporate ladder at this job, I think personally you need to have as much job experience as you can get. So I'm not saying like get a job, quit the job two months later, get a new job, quit the job two months later. And it's okay for you to bounce around a little bit trying to find at least somewhat of a fulfilling job because you know, you as a new college graduate, um, and I'm kind of speaking in terms of, you know, a college graduate who is graduating when they're around 21 to probably 24, 25, but you are so young, and I don't think we really realize how young we really are. I still don't. I feel like I'm ancient, but I'm only 23. But I mean, we are so young and we have so much more to learn, to grow and become who we are meant to be. So it is okay, you know, not to have the perfect job out of college. You are 23, 24, 25. I don't think there's any reason for you to stay with a company that one day you're gonna outgrow. You're gonna change as a person. Your priorities are gonna change. And so the job you were hired at right out of college is probably not gonna be the job you're gonna stay in by the time you're 40. It's okay to not be in love with your job. We're so young. We're so malleable. We have so much more to do in this life than just commit ourselves to one job for the rest of our lives. If you are right now, if you are in a job and you just graduated college and you're like, I don't think this is for me, it's okay. You have so much more opportunity ahead of you and it's definitely not, you're definitely not stuck. Alrighty y'all, so that is for right now. That's all I really wanted to address with the transition between being a full-time college student to being a full-time employee at a company. I really hope these three tips, advice, little rambles um, helped you and kind of give you some insight about my perspective when it comes to transitioning from a college student to a full-time employee. I know that it can be hard. I know that transitions can be very difficult for some people and it can be you know sometimes it can be sad sometimes it can be exciting sometimes it can be you know anxiety ridden and whatever you're feeling to be honest during this this transition time is totally normal and uh you deserve you really do deserve to feel what you feel in that moment and just you know, take one day at a time. I think at the end of the day, the biggest advice I can give to you when you're transitioning is just take it one day at a time and drink water, get some sleep, start the next day. You got this, okay?